Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. So a few weeks back, I shared a, some video of a piece of steel that I bought that I talked about I was gonna make a new table. It's gonna be for this general area right here. Piece of three quarter inch plate. And I had some of these pieces that I shared and these are gonna be the legs. So what I'm doing here is I'm starting the first process for building this table. The idea that I had come about uh, for, for building this table is instead of just having you know just an end that's going to sit down on the concrete I had run across these these machinery pads from Jack Hoying on his website and there were six of them and I plan on making six legs so I got six of these to make and I'm going to utilize these for the bottom of the table they got these nice heavy duty rubber feet there to help isolate it and a three quarter inch thread so what I am doing is I am making some solid ends, some inserts that's going to go in the end of these tubes here, and then I'll weld them in. I'm going to be using this stock right here. This is three and a half inch, 1045. This is chrome plated steel. This is a drop or a scrap hydraulic rod that I had cut up, and this is three and a half inch. And the reason why I'm using three and a half is that what I can do is I can turn this down to three inches or, or turn it down so that it fits inside this. This is four inch square tubing, half wall, so you have a three inch inside. So what we're going to do is turn about half of these down to three inch and then we're going to drill it and tap them so that they'll, the feet can screw up in there just like so. I have a new tool here from Edge Technology that I've been wanting to try out on a job like this and, and what this is is a chuck stop so when you have multiple pieces of material that you want to uh, stick in your chuck just like if you was to use a collet stop be able to put your work piece in there and come up to a stop and face it off or do your machining at the same spot every time that's what this uh, this collet I'm sorry this chuck stops for from edge so I've been wanting to try that out and I finally am going to pull it out of the box. This is for a three jaw chuck and we're going to check this thing out and see how it works. And I'm going to do all the facing for all of these parts right here using that chuck stop right there. I just decided to make them two inches wide. So we'll have half of it turn. I cut them off, I don't know, just a little over two inches. So I got some metal there to play with. So let's bring it down here and let's take a look at this chuck stop set. All right, so these are the pieces out of the box here. And then these are going to be the parallels for it. And this guy right here is actually just a case. It's a nice plastic case that you can put all of your parallels in. And there they are listed from half inch to one and five eighths. All right, and then these are, these are going to be the parallels here. And then this is the this is the part that's going to go in the, the three jaw. The parallels are going to screw to these three legs right here. And with this pushed up, I believe you got magnets here that's going to hold this to the chuck. And then these are centering rings that's going to go into the middle of the chuck. And this will suck up to the face of the chuck. And with these parallels on here, that should give a nice parallel surface off of the face of the chuck that you'd be able to put a you know, repeat and put your work pieces in there and have it in the same location. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take this apart and uh, start setting them up. So here's the three sets of parallels. I'm just trying to get everything out. Just pull one apart right here and show you. So there's one of them right there for the half inch, and that's going to should be all three of them stack in there. And then these are your little centering rings that will actually just kind of fit in the bore of the chuck. And they have several of them there. So I'm going to get all these put into the case there. All right, so we got all the parallels unwrapped out of the, the paper. And I just left the, the wax on them to help protect them from some rust. I went ahead and loaded up the ones that I believe are going to be the right, uh, the right size. And we'll go down there to the flat surface, the uh, granite plate, and I'll show you you know how you how how I installed it you they're a little bit fidgety there's a little thin washer a spacer that goes behind the 
the parallels and then you have another wash on the other side so just a little bit of fidgety to try to get the everything lined up but you get everything started leave the bolts loose and just set it flat on the granite plate I found that if I pushed on it and tighten up the screws that it would be it wouldn't be flat it would rock a little bit I let it just sit there loosely and just lightly tightened up the uh, the screws and it stayed stayed flat so these are the mag magnets right there so it'll suck up to the to the uh, chuck now the three inch is what I'm going to use and I had to take and I actually just filed this I just took a file and just very lightly filed a little bit off and I got this fitting really close inside the board my chuck so that's the one we're going to use right there is the the three inch all right so let's go down there to the, the surface plate and I'll show you how I installed it so that's it I just put all the parallels on there and left the bolts loose set it down just like that and then came in there and just very lightly snug those up and then went around and snug them all a little bit more once I had them so that's how you set the parallels right there on a flat plate okay so we made it over to our three jaw chuck I'm gonna go ahead and install it so the centering ring goes into the bore of the chuck there and the magnets suck it up to it so the centering ring keeps it from trying to shift anyway all right and then our parallels are actually flush against the face of the chuck right there and that's just how it works so we'll take our work pieces and be able to stick them in there and tighten them up so what we'll try we'll uh, we'll, we'll play with two or three of them here and get us a couple faces uh, faced off on one side and then we'll flip them around and face them and then we'll do some check-in and inspection to see how close we're actually getting with uh, using this stop right here I think I'm going to use my trigon tool there and let's go ahead and get the first one uh, all of them faced off on one side because they're not perfectly square so we got approximately that's a little over a hundred thousandths I just scaled them out at an eighth of an inch so a little over a hundred thousandths let's go ahead and get them faced and what I want to do I want to make sure that my tool is perfectly in the center and that might take a couple of tries here I want to make sure that it doesn't leave any nub in the center it's going to be a 50 thousandths cut like it we got it a little bit rough right there in the center because our surface speed is so low all right I'll leave us about a sixteenth to come off there okay I'm gonna go ahead and chamfer that while we're at it so this should be with those spacers in there it's gonna make this a lot easier I'm gonna use my MCHNN tool and as long as I don't interrupt my stop here. All right, let's go ahead and flip this around. We're not flipping around. We're actually going to swap it out. I'm making sure that my saw cut little nub there isn't on top of the the blade and when I come in here I want to make sure that it's square square to the jaw so I'm just kind of touching the parallels and 
I'm looking down at and seeing if there's any run out. We're looking pretty good right there. I don't see any run out. Yeah, that one's shorter right there. So this was number two. I'm just gonna go ahead and do all six of them like this. We get one side face. And then once I do, we'll come back and then we'll start doing the other side, okay? Okay, so I got all six slugs faced on one side now. And we'll start with this one. That's saying we got about 40 thousandths to bring it to two inch. Now keep in mind, this is not a, a critical dimension. It's just two inches what I was shooting for. So if we need to, we can always face more off. This is sort of a practice exercise. And I did uh, use some scotch Bright on the face to try to remove any of the fuzz there in the center. So now this is where we're gonna get a little more critical. I wanna make sure there's no dust on that face. All right, just gonna hold a little pressure on it. All right, so what, what I want to do here is uh, I'm going to make a cut. We'll take this one out. We'll grab another one, put it in there, and then we're going to measure them and, and see how close they are to each other. Let's go ahead. I'm not going to worry about chamfering it yet. I'm going to go ahead and rub it with some scotch right there. Let's go ahead and, and we'll swap it out. Let's see about what we had on our size. All right, so we got about 25,000 still to come off. That's pretty good. Hold pressure. Come back up to our zero on our dial indicator. Take a cut. All right, we got granddad's two to three inch sterret. This is the first one. You can see the scratch marks where I didn't retract the tool out. So let's get a measurement on this and see. Looks like 26 thousandths. Twenty six. Looks like we're at twenty five thousandths on that one, so about a thousandths difference. So I got you over here on the, the granite plate, and we have two inspection stands set up. And this is just to kind of give you a, a two options there to look at. One a little bit easier to see on the stare at dial right here. This is an inner rapid test indicator. Both of these are reading intense but uh, this one's just a little easier to see. So there's a couple things going on here that I just discovered with this uh, little test right here. Not only were we checking uh, accuracy of the chuck stop parallels to see how close the parts would be, we're also finding a little bit of deviation in the machine itself by doing this, okay? And I remember learning about this right here, this particular cut and in inspection whenever I was taking the Richard King a scraping class this is one of the things that he had talked about with uh, machinery inspection so this has to do with the the dove the uh, I'm sorry the dovetail weighs on the cross slide and the wear in them so we're gonna go ahead and run one up here and keep in mind that this test indicator the way we're using it is gonna be counterclockwise okay so what I've done is kinda set it so that the center you'll see we go to the middle is kind of going towards the zero mark right there all right so as we approach the outer diameter of the part it's actually uh, 
you know, measuring higher right there. If we come off there and I kind of touch the indicator, you see it's going in a clockwise manner. All right, so we got about, I don't know, three, three to three and a half thousandths right there. All right, so then we come over here. Let's go to the outer, and it's right around the three mark on the indicator. So let's look at this one here. So that one's around the two mark. It's actually just a little bit below that. So what that's showing there is that we're about a thousandths, maybe a little, maybe a thousandths and a half difference in height as far as where we position these parts in the chuck. All right, and then we check this one. It does the same thing. Okay, drops down as we get towards the middle. I'll bring you over here to the stair it. You see that okay? All right, so we're about uh, just a shade over two thousandths on our highest. And then that now we're reading a little bit a little bit easier to see there. Now we're reading our counterclockwise manner going to a zero. And that's just jumping across the tool marks is what that is as we get to the middle. Whenever you're you're running those really low surface speeds as you get to the very middle of the part. So that one's showing about two thousandths on that one there. Let's check this one right here. All right, that's so uh, that's starting out about two and a half thou over zero. I'm just using zero as a reference point, okay? And then that one takes you down right at to the zero part again. So what I'm seeing is I'm seeing where in the uh, the dovetail ways of the cross slide with it cutting like this. Again, that was just something that I remember us uh, kind of learning a little bit about in the Richard in the Richard Keen class. So I'm not really sure what to do about that at this point. You know, without I'm definitely not rebuilding any machinery at this point, but this is just a neat inspection to be able to see uh, how the how the machine is operating. But this isn't a definitive answer right here. I want to go ahead and finish facing the other parts and do a final inspection on all six of them and kind of see how close all of them are okay so there's just a, a fun little test in the shop you know with some of the inspection stuff that I have here and here here in the shop and I just don't really get to use it a whole lot I got my first two pieces already faced off again and I shot for the exact two inch width Be a little too much to take right there. I'm gonna split that into two cuts. So I've got a zero on that dial that's supposed to be exactly a two inch thickness on the plate right there. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna face all six of them to that zero mark without taking the tool out because I got to thinking too, this could change a little bit, a thousandths or whatever, by taking this tool in and out every time. So there's, there's different things that can induce some error on this if you're looking for an exact measurement. And I'm trying to hit my zero exactly. Locking the cross slide. So the other thing that could be happening here is too as well is not, not just these dovetails where we're square this way, but the carriage itself could have enough wear in it on the, the ways of the machine to where this cross slide is not perfectly square with the ways of the machine anymore. There is wear on this machine. I can feel it. That's just what you get when you have a, an older used piece of equipment. Alright, so that's what we're going to do. i got three more to do. I'm also hitting it with scotch bright just to try to remove any of that fuzziness there in the center. And I'm not worrying about any chamfers because we'll just use this side as our turn down side. 
and I'm trying to eliminate not take the tool out. See how close I can get on all the all of the parts. And I will add also, let me grab another one. I'm not hitting it like you normally would in a milling vise where you try to tap it down on the parallels. All I'm doing, I'm just going to hold it in there by hand and tighten it up. Okay, we got all six of them faced. So what we're going to do is I'm, I'm going to take my mic and just kind of get a, an overall reading with the mic on the width of what I see what I ended up with. So, so that's showing a half a thousandth over two inches right there on that one. And this one, huh, that one's reading a half a thousandths over two inches also. I was just kind of getting a, a general idea of what we're measuring at. I think we're going to be within a thousandths. That one's right at two inches right there. And that one, that one looks more than a half a thou over. So we're right there. I think I think our chuck stop system for the parallels is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of a thousandths, maybe a thousandths and a half uh, deviation. So anyway, let's go over back over to the granite plate and uh, check them. All right, I picked one and got a, a zero point referenced on the the dial indicator here. So we we're still showing our approximate two thousandths dip to the to the center. We go to the outer edge, we're about, right about zero mark on that, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the next one. So I call that a half a thousandths, right there, it's a half a thousandths lower. We have our same drop to the center, about two thousandths. About a half a thousandths under. So what I'm checking is the accuracy of the, you know, each time I put a, a workpiece into the chuck. That one's just a shade over right there. There was one of them, I don't remember which one it is, there's one of them that I actually tapped with my nylon hammer and then after I did that, when I decided I wasn't going to tap them anymore, because I was worried that it would actually, by tapping it, it would just move everything around. So one of them looks like it's a little bit over, but I might not have had it all the way in there, too. That's about zero right there. That's showing the um, <laughs> parallelism. All right. Go to number five here. Yeah, there's the one that's uh, that's that's high. Well, it looks like a mile of an indicator, doesn't it? But it's only a thousandths and a half. This is probably the one. If I had to, if I had to guess, if I had a way to check that, this is probably the one I was hitting with the hammer. Thousandths and a half. And we still got. So they're all consistent with the two thousandths dip to the middle of it. All right, that one's a little bit more than a half a thou under. So, as I said, that's just kind of checking the consistency with the stack up there on the on the chuck stop, and I was real curious as to how that was going to work out. <clears throat> but, I mean, I'm pleased with it, and I think that's going to be a valuable tool to use for multiple parts like this. So, I would say we've got one and a half thousandths uh, deviation probably a, you know one and a half thou accuracy on repeatability as far as putting your parts in there and there's probably some work that I could do on my part to increase that you know as far as the machine goes too but this was a good uh, fun exercise and so the next step with these parts right here is we're going to go ahead and uh, set them back up in the in the lathe 
and we're going to turn one side down and then we're also going to drill and tap for a three-quarter ten stud okay that'll be on the next video all right